This presentation is part of a series of presentations on infection control in care homes. The key outcomes are to understand how infections are spread and to understand how to prevent the spread of infection by understanding the core elements of standard infection control precautions. Also, to understand the key principles of reducing the spread of viral gastroenteritis in care homes. The first four presentations focus on the core elements of standard infection control precautions. The first focuses on cleanliness and decontamination. The second focuses on bloodborne viruses and the management of inoculation injuries. The third, the third focuses on the use of personal protective equipment. The fourth focuses on hand hygiene. Standard infection control precautions should be applied in all healthcare settings to reduce the risk of infection to patients, residents and staff. This presentation is the fifth in the series and focuses on the key principles for reducing the spread of viral gastroenteritis in care home settings. Diarrhea and vomiting can be caused by infective and non-infective agents. Residents with diarrhea and vomiting should be regarded as, as infectious unless known to be otherwise. As norovirus is the most common cause of diarrhea and vomiting in care homes, you should, you should always suspect norovirus unless there is another obvious cause. When residents have a liquid stool or vomit, this will contaminate the environment and the hands of staff. This, in turn, will increase the risk of the infection spreading. Diarrhoea is an abnormal faecal discharge characterised by frequent fluid stools which may result in fluid and electrolyte loss. Gastroenteritis is characterised by symptoms of nausea, vomiting, which may be projectile, diarrhoea and abdominal discomfort. There may also be fever, chills, aching muscles and headache. When you suspect that a patient has norovirus, you should arrange for the resident to have a stool specimen tested in the laboratory. This should be arranged with a resident's GP. Specimens of vomit are not tested by the laboratory. The specimen request form should include details of the resident's symptoms, when the symptoms started and whether there are any other residents with symptoms in the care home. There are several germs that can cause residents to have diarrhoea and vomiting. These include Campylobacter, Salmonella, Clostridium difficile, Giardia, Staph aureus and Rotavirus. However, the most common cause is norovirus. Small round structured viruses such as norovirus are a common cause of outbreaks in care homes and are the commonest cause of gastrointestinal symptoms among staff. Norovirus usually occurs in the winter months, most commonly between October and April, but can occur at any time of the year. Attack rates are high, about 50%, so about 50% of residents and staff may get the infection. Incubation, the time between picking up the virus and starting to become ill, is usually between 12 and 48 hours. The onset of symptoms is sudden. Symptoms are short-lived and acute, affecting staff and residents. People may be infectious for 48 hours after they stop vomiting and for 48 hours after their stools return to normal. Immunity is short term, so people can get norovirus several times. Everyone can get the infection. Some people, such as the elderly, can become very unwell if they get norovirus because the diarrhoea and vomiting can cause them to become dehydrated. Norovirus spreads easily in care homes. There are several ways that infection can spread. 
The virus can be passed directly from a person with infection to another person. The virus can be passed indirectly from a contaminated environment to another person. The virus can be passed on the hands of staff or by contaminated food. Aerosol transmission can happen because when people vomit, large numbers of the virus spread in droplets that can contaminate surfaces or can be inhaled and swallowed by other people. Therefore, residents with unexplained diarrhoea or vomiting should be nursed in a single room. Ideally, they should be single rooms with an ensuite toilet and shower. If these are not available, it is necessary to segregate a commode for the use only of the person who has the diarrhoea and vomiting. To prevent spread, it is essential that there is a strict compliance with infection control precautions. All staff must wear aprons and gloves for contact with the resident and with the resident's equipment. They must also thoroughly wash their hands after removing aprons and gloves. It is important to remember that alcohol rubs are not recommended for use after contact with residents who have diarrhoea and vomiting. Soap and water should be used for hand decontamination. Where possible, staff will look after residents who have been having symptoms or would have been exposed to the infection should not look after residents who have not been exposed to the infection and do not have symptoms. With the resident's permission, you should remove any exposed food from the resident's rooms as it may have virus particles on it. Contaminated linen should be treated as infectious and managed accordingly. Waste should be treated as infectious and managed accordingly. All crockery and cutlery should be washed in the dishwasher. The use of fans should be avoided if a resident has diarrhoea or if there is an outbreak of diarrhoea and vomiting in the home. Any diarrhoea or vomit should be cleaned up immediately using the correct personal protective equipment. After the vomit or diarrhoea has been cleaned up, you should disinfect the area with a chlorine releasing agent at 1,000 parts per million. All equipment should be thoroughly decontaminated after use. Patients' rooms should be cleaned on at least a daily basis. Particular attention should be paid to areas that are handled frequently, such as taps, flush handles and door handles. You should always use disposable cloths for cleaning. A colour-coded system should be used for cleaning in accordance with your local policy, which may reflect the MPSA Safer Practice Notice 15 for colour coding of cleaning equipment for hospitals. The colour coding you choose should apply to mops, buckets, cloths, aprons and gloves. The MPSA guidance advises red for bathrooms, washrooms, showers, toilet basins and bathroom floors, blue for general areas, green for catering areas, and yellow for isolation areas. Your cloth should be disposable and change between rooms. All decontamination should be done by either using a general purpose neutral detergent followed by a chlorine re releasing agent at 1000 parts per million or by using a combined detergent disinfectant product diluted to 1000 parts per million available chlorine. Where possible, domestic staff should not move between areas that are affected and those that are not. Where this is not possible, domestic staff should clean areas that are affected separately from those that are not affected. Areas that are not affected should always be cleaned first. Separate cleaning equipment should be used for cleaning affected and non-affected areas. Domestic trolleys should not be taken inside the residents' rooms when they have diarrhoea and vomiting. When a resident has diarrhoea or vomiting, you should inform relatives and visitors of what they can do to reduce the risk of spreading the infection. You should also provide them with an information leaflet. 
and in the event of an outbreak you should place an advisory notice on the care home door. Should advise relatives and visitors, where possible, to reduce their visit, visits whilst there is an outbreak. Children should not visit if the person they are visiting has diarrhoea or vomiting, or if there is an outbreak in the home. You should also advise the relatives and visitors that they should not visit if they have had diarrhoea and or vomiting, or if they have had diarrhoea and vomiting in the last 48 hours. You should monitor bowel function and you should maintain hydration and electrolyte balance of your residence. You should isolate the resident for 48 hours after the last episode of vomiting and for 48 hours after the resident's diarrhoea has stopped. At this point you should remove the resident from isolation and arrange for a terminal clean of the room. Very importantly, you must have a heightened awareness of other residents developing diarrhoea or vomiting. When there are two or more residents with symptoms, this may indicate an outbreak. And if you are in any doubt, you should inform the Care and Social Services Inspector at Wales. The relevant GP, the Health Protection Team and the Environmental Health Officer should also be informed and will advise. When an outbreak is suspected or confirmed, you should limit staff movement and the use of bank or agency staff. You should limit, it, limit resident movement, including non-essential visits to hospitals. The health protection team and the environmental health officers will advise on whether there is a need to close the home. They may advise that new admissions to the home should not occur whilst there is an outbreak of diarrhoea and vomiting. In the event of the home being closed, a resident who has been admitted to hospital with diarrhoea or vomiting may be readmitted to the home when they are fit for discharge from hospital. You should advise relatives if the home has been closed. High levels of cleaning with a chlorine releasing agent as re are required as described in a previous slide. If a resident from the home needs to be admitted to a hospital, you must inform the hospital staff that the resident, resident currently has or has previously had diarrhoea or vomiting, or that there are other residents in the home who have had or currently have diarrhoea and vomiting. This information should also be given to the ambulance staff. If staff have diarrhoea or vomiting that cannot be explained by other causes, they should report their symptoms and report sick in accordance with your local policy. Staff who have unexplained diarrhoea and vomiting should stay off work for 48 hours after their symptoms have stopped. Staff may be asked to submit a faecal specimen according to local policy. Cleaning of symptomatic residents' rooms, including the environment and equipment, should be undertaken after the resident has been free of symptoms for 48 hours. This will include changing the curtains in the room. After an outbreak, the entire home, including the environment and equipment, should be thoroughly cleaned before the home returns to normal function. Where possible, all decontamination should be undertaken with a chlorine releasing agent as described on a previous slide. The health protection team and the environmental health officer will advise on when terminal cleaning and disinfection should occur and when new admissions can safely be admitted to the home. It is important to remember that the decontamination of hands is the single most effective step in the prevention of cross-infection. Further information can be obtained in the ABMU Health Board publication General Information and Infection Control Precautions to Prepare for and Manage Norovirus in Care Homes.
and also from a Public Health Wales publication, Communicable Disease Control, a Guide for Care Staff. Remember that infection control is everyone's business and everyone has a role to play in protecting your residents. 